This is a HeadGum Podcast. Here's a question. What is care slash of? Care of is a monthly subscription vitamin service made from effective quality ingredients, personally tailored for your exact needs. So I got an email and they were like, take this quiz. So I took a quiz, super easy, super fun, super chill, lots of pictures, truly kept me engaged, bright colors, good for me. And it literally designed the vitamins that I should be taking. And truly I read through it and I was like, this is right. I should be taking these vitamins. And there's tons of benefits to vitamins. So even if you try to maintain a healthy diet, guess what? It can be hard to get all those nutrients your body needs for long-term health. Vitamins also fill the important gaps that your body is missing from your diet. And get this, 90%. It's a lot of people. That's almost all the people. They fall short of the FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. Also, the recommendations are built on clinical research with traditional medicine, with input from doctors and nutritionists. It includes individually wrapped packets with your specific vitamins and supplements for easy grab and go. Because you can't be shaking stuff out of bottles being like, what's this and the other thing? Nope, these are just wrapped up for you. And guess what? It costs about 20% less uh, when compared to similar brands at drugstores and local health food stores. So for 25% off your first month of personalized Care of Vitamins, visit careof.com and enter the promo code DATEME for 25%. I'm saying it again because you might have missed it, but you get 25 to 5% of your first month of personalized vitamins via Care of. Visit TakeCareOf.com. The promo code is date me. What a treat. You'll be swallowing big old vitamins in no time. Bye bye. It's called Why Won't You Date Me? And today's guest, he's not a comedian. He's not an actor. He's just a nice man that I know. His name is EJ Waborski. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> yow, 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 yow. Hi, Hello. EJ. We were just catching up. EJ, here's a question that I don't know. Uh, what does EJ stand for? It stands for Elias Justin. Elias Justed? Yeah, Elias was my was my great grandfather, and Justin was just a name that my mom liked, and oh. uh, so my my parents put their their Jewish and uh, generic white person naming conventions together to come up with uh, with Elias Justin. I like that. I like it a lot. That's a fun name. But EJ is also just as fun. Uh, I don't know. Fun, I like names. I like fun names. I feel like my name is very very boring. Nicole. You know, uh, all the Nicoles that I know in my personal life are delightful. All the Nicoles I've ever worked with have been kind of less delightful. (laughs) Well, good thing we never worked together. So when I met you, let's see, I met you in 2017. No, this is 2017. (laughs) 2007, yes? Yes. And where were you working then? Were you working at LimeWire? Do I remember this correctly? Yeah, yeah, great memory. I was working at LimeWire, the, the now defunct LimeWire. But isn't LimeWire like illegal streaming and stuff? It wasn't illegal until the court said so. Oh, streaming makes no sense. What do you actually do? Like, you have a real adult job, and most of my friends do not have real adult jobs. I, I do. I have, a, I have a semi-real, semi-adult job that I go to almost every day of the week uh, where I make websites and mobile applications and uh, large scale digital installations for brands. Um, So like retail brands, um, lifestyle brands, I do some marketing and advertising. So you could make me a website? Like manage a team of people who can make you a website (laughs) or I could coach you through the website making process if you happen to like 
be on, uh, you know, Squarespace or something like that. I need someone to just do it for me. I don't understand computers. Do you find that people uh, in your in your business, does having a website really help? Or does just, you know, do you rely on like YouTube and, and podcasts and things like that really uh, to get your, get, get your work out? I would say like YouTube, podcasts, uh, making content is helpful. But for like live shows, people will be like, it is impossible to find your live shows because you just tweet about them. So if I don't like catch a tweet, I, I don't know when you're performing. So if I had a website, it would be very easy for people to go to yeah. it. Uh, but I mean, I've come this far without a website. Maybe I, maybe I'll never get one. Hey, you know, you could just be that, that, that gal who's like out there living at the 1970s way. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld never had a website, you know? Yeah. And I mean, Seinfeld's doing okay. I know. I haven't heard anything from him. You yeah. Know? I mean, he's just doing, he's barely floating it. He's barely, you know, trucking along. Here's a question. EJ, are you single right now? No, I have a I have a girlfriend. Actually, my my first ever live in girlfriend. Wow! 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 When did you guys move in together? Uh, we moved in together last month. Actually, it's 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 been a new a new experience. This is very new. Where did you meet her? I met her on Tinder. Of you all met places. her on Tinder? Yeah, you know Whoa. it. <laughs> I can't meet anybody on Tinder. Everyone has literally been a dumpster. So okay. You met this woman on Tinder. Did you message her first? Uh, I did. I actually, I messaged her first, and she was not impressed with my opener in the what slightest. What was your opener? I had something in her profile about uh, being a music snob and something about how she likes cute boys who read books on the subway. So I said something to the effect of, you know, I'm a cute boy who reads books on the subway, <laughs> and and then like you know occasionally works of music snobbery mm -hmm. um you know, books about music so that was my opener and i got nothing so i went a lot harder the second time around with my with my re-opener uh and that was even less successful than the first one so wait how many times did you message this woman before she was like fine definitely like stalker levels of persistence for really? sure really yeah i think i probably sent I, I've, I, you know, I've since deleted Tinder so that she didn't get suspicious when yes. my phone was blowing up with like old whatever, you know, alerts and shit. But I think she, she went back and screenshotted our whole initial conversation so that she could tell all of her, all of her friends <laughs> who I was. But yeah, I, I would say probably like six or seven times. Wow. Six or seven times. Yeah. She would give like one word responses. She would do. Okay. And then how long did you talk on Tinder before actually going out? Yeah. God, this is like shameful. Uh, uh, probably a month. I would say wow! I messaged her, if I remember correctly, like a day or two after my birthday, which is in early February. My birthday was like on the Super Bowl. So I probably like the day after that, after I cleaned up my house after my party, I messaged her. And then I think our first date was March 12th. So over a month of, of persistent go on a date with me before I finally broke her will. Wow. And then what was your first date? Uh, she invited me to a dive bar that was literally across the street from her apartment. So as to put in a minimal amount of effort on her part to either get ready for the, for the date or trans transport herself to the date and back. I like her. I should probably learn from her. Just like, don't answer anybody. <laughs> Finally go, fine, I'll go out with you. Make them come to me and then move mm -hmm. in with them. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was actually just, that, that was pretty much the step one, two, and three of our entire relationship history. <laughs> so how long did you date before moving in together? Well, let's see. So that was March, uh, March until September. So that's uh, like five, five and a half months, something like that. That's a good chunk of time. Is this your first long-term girlfriend, or have you had many long-term girlfriends? I, I've had other long-term girlfriends in the past. This is, this is the first one, as I said, this is the first one I've, I've lived with. This is the first one where I, where, like, I didn't need to be or feel the need to be just, like, totally selfish in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, very graciously, she was, like, totally willing to just kind of, like, adapt to my, my life and lifestyle. So there wasn't a lot of, like something you know when you say your life and lifestyle what are you doing that's so wild that she had to adapt to it 
Oh, very much the opposite. She's she just turned twenty five in in June. So you know, we met. I was had just turned thirty one, and she was twenty four. And I've been in New York for ten years, and she's been here for three years. So like, I'm very settled. I've got two dogs. I have you know my own apartment. Whereas she was like living with two rando thirty somethings she met on Craigslist in like mm. a sublet with you know r- working at, at at her own startup and kind of making her own hours and. She has a much, much more, I think, freewheeling, uh, socially active life than I have at this point. You just stay at home. You go to work. You got your dogs. Yeah. I'm, I'm living that dad life. What kind of dogs do you have? Two rescue dogs. One's five years old, uh, and the other is just about a year old. And they're both, uh, you know, mutt-ish. I think one's probably part shepherd, maybe part German shepherd, part chihuahua. Definitely, yeah. ch- definitely. That's a wild combination. A German yeah. Shepherd and a Chihuahua? Like, who fucked who? Great question. I don't think that this dog could have possibly come out of a Chihuahua's tummy. So definitely the German Shepherd was the mom. But that makes you wonder. Well, yeah. That's like a real baller, like, man Chihuahua being like, I'm a fuck you. Chihuahua definitely also exhibited persistence to, 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 mount, to mount that German Shepherd. That's for sure. It's a good lesson. Never give up. I have two dogs. I rescued one from like a foster home. It was so weird. They were like, he was in this home. They didn't like him. So we took him away. And then they kept saying rescue. And I was like, but I'm literally picking him up from somebody's house. So how is he rescued? Rescue to me yeah. is like, I'm going to this like sad place where there's like dogs in cages. You like literally pick a puppy off of like an uh, like an assembly line yes, with like a guillotine at the end of that's it. That's uh-huh. rescuing. This is yeah, just like yeah. he was in a home and they were like, uh, "We don't want him anymore." Yeah, I had I had mine are like that too. They're both from uh, like an organization, you know, that sponsors trips to like get these dogs out of places and then puts them up on like the internet or. At, You've a uh, nice apartment. Okay, people listening, Wait, I, we're screen? on a video chat, and EJ lives in New York in an apartment with two levels. Yeah, staircase. There's Internal a staircase. fucking upstairs in your apartment? <laughs> Good yeah, you lord! You've made it! I have, I have two balconies. Can you, you, can you believe that? You have two balconies? That's why. I don't even use one. One of, them is like, one of them might as well be a dumpster. I never go out there. <laughs> so I guess you're doing well managing people making websites. We don't have to talk about your finances. Um, so I sent you, <laughs> I sent you my Tinder profile. So let's let's look at it because I want you to tell me what you think I could improve upon. Okay. So the first picture is me holding a big old dildo. Do you think that's like too forward? Do you think that's good? Because everyone I've asked has been a comedian, and they've been like, "That's great. It shows like a." you know, a silly side of you. You love dicks, but you're like a normal person, which is what I'm trying to, I want a normal person. I don't want a comedian. So what say you? Well, I think that, you know, when you put yourself out there with a a large comical prop and and or, you know, a personal pleasure device, uh, (laughs) I think that you're inviting people to make jokes. Uh And I think with you being a professional comedian, uh, you're really like you're really inviting kind of like open mic night on your on your DMs there huh. with people making you know dick references. So like unless you're looking for someone who's exceptionally funny and that's going to be your filter, you make the best dick joke. Can you make the best huge dildo joke to me? Um, you're probably just going to get a lot of lames. That's very that's a very good assessment because. It is kind of how I weed people out. I'm like, okay, if you either say nothing about it or you have, like, a real banger of a joke about it, I'll talk to you. But for the most part, it's a lot of dudes being like, that's a huge dildo. And I always go, what? And they're like, the dildo. <laughs> Wait, and what? Like, what Who? are you talking about? They're like, the dildo. <laughs> well, you got to be like, you gotta be like, yo, that's, that's my Uncle Fred. Yeah. <laughs> Don't talk about Fred that way. Yeah, nobody knows how to, like, make a good joke about it. Okay, and then the next picture is me. I, I'm humping a Christmas tree, but I don't think it conveys that I'm humping it. It just looks like I'm posing next to it. Good picture, bad mm-hmm. picture. Uh, you know, again, I feel like you're opening yourself up to, like, some big wood jokes. Mm. Um, although I can say, you know, it is after uh, October 1st now, so it is technically Christmas season as far as I can tell. It is Christmas season, so I guess it's good. I'll leave it up. The next one is 
me in, if you're in the business, you'll know I'm in a trailer. If you're not in the business, you'll be like, oh, what a nice little house she's in. But it's like a cute little selfie. I got a cute little dress on. I think my makeup mm. looks good. Good picture, bad picture. That sounds like a great picture. I think Are that, you should, be your, at the that should be your, your hero. No, I, I, how am I? You didn't use me you the pictures. Are they like attached? I see a bunch of screenshots of conversations. <laughs> I don't see the actual oh, photos. Then maybe I didn't do that. Here's the thing. I have ADD and I think I do things and I don't. All right. Well, I'll keep just describing pictures to you. <laughs> I think that picture sounds wonderful. I think that, that the, the, like letting people know that you're professional, you're a grown ass professional woman yeah. is important. Okay. The next one is a picture of my butt. It's like the back of me and I'm like climbing a bookcase and I'm wearing <laughs> a black onesie. Mm, lucky bookcase. <laughs> Okay, so you think that's a good picture? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. Is it a cat? Was it like a Catwoman black onesie? What kind of black one? Is it like I mean, pajamas? No, it's not pajamas. It's like a, it's a very tight onesie. I guess like mm. it's like a cat suit. Yeah, cat suit sounds great. I figure it's like I'm a big lady. I should show my body so people know exactly what they're getting. I feel like a lot of fat women will like take selfies that are like at a very high angle, and it's like, bitch, that's not who you are. Yeah, I can tell you from, from the male perspective, like I have, uh, I would say, an eclectic palette for, mm -hmm. for ladies. And I think that, you know, I just want to know what I'm getting into. I, I need to know what kind of prep to do. You know, I want to be what mentally prepared. What kind of prepared. prep do you do for fat women? Do you like put Crisco well, on your fingers in case they want a snack? <laughs> All of my Southern boy talking points. You know, I talk about how I'm like, <laughs> You know, I got the, the best mac and cheese <laughs> recipe. Like, I was just I, like, sorry, I got to go home now. I got a pot of collards on the stove. Slow I would cooking. honestly love to go out with a man that was like, I got so much food at home. <laughs> it's like, is he trying to lure me to his house to eat? I would be very down for that. No, I know we're thousands of miles away, but I have about six quarts of bolognese in the freezer <laughs> that I made. Do you? Is that real? Do you really? Yeah, 100. Oh my God, I fucking love bolognese. Send me some bolognese. Send it through the mail. <laughs> I don't, is that legal? I'll, I'll give it a shot. You can do it, but it might not get to me good. My aunt sent me an Easter spoiled. dinner through the mail and she, she did not mm. put it in any sort of ice, like no dry ice, nothing. She just put a bunch of food in a box and sent it to me. And then Ooh. the post office was closed for the holiday. So it just sat and like baked and like got gross. And then when I went to go pick it up, I like go to the post office, give them that little pink slip. And then one of the ladies behind the counter was just like, Ooh, oh, it's you. Ooh, I can't wait till you open this box. And then I, <laughs> she hands me this box and I open it and it stinks and it's dripping. And I was like, oh my God, is this like the end of seven? Is there like a head in this box? And then I open it and it's just a box of rotten food. And then my aunt called uh, me and she's like, did you get your Easter dinner? I was like, I did, it was delicious. I didn't have the heart to tell her that she sent me trash. Yeah, it's like actual biological waste. In yeah, the mail. it was bad. And those ladies laughed at me for a long time. It was very embarrassing. Yikes. Well, the alternative is that they send it to you as if it were an actual head or organ, like in <laughs> double styrofoam with layers of dry ice in between. I've, I've, I've gotten the mail order barbecue from Texas before, and that's the, yeah, that's how it comes. That would have been so much better. It would have kept and I would have like maybe eaten it. But she also put raw bacon in there. I was Ooh. like, why would I eat bacon for dinner? One, two, why is it raw when other things are cooked? She like cooked mac and cheese. It was yeah. nuts. It didn't make Ugh. any sense. It's not sense. hard to cook bacon. No, it's not hard to cook bacon at all. Here's another question. So have did you online date for a long time or no before getting this current Yeah, girlfriend? off and on, for sure. I, I, I used um, Tinder and another app called Happen. Um, Happen? Those are the only two that I've been on, yeah. What's Happen? I don't know Happen. Happen, I feel like, is much more relevant for the New York audience and the L.A. audience because it's based on who you cross paths with. Like uh, you just enable location services and it mm -hmm. kind of just tracks your location in the background and tells you, it sends you a list of, of people that you've, that you've crossed paths with who also have the app. Oh. And then you get to like see how many, you see how many times you've crossed paths with them and then like how far away they are now. So it's, it's very like location based, but it's the same as Tinder. You have like a profile with a bunch of images and some. And it's called Happen? Yeah, with, with no E, H-A-P-P-N. I'm going to download it right now. 
Yeah, it would be real weird in L.A. because it's like, you know, oh, we sat in traffic next to each other on the 101. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. I'm just I'm on Hinge right now. And Hinge mm. takes like people that, you know, from Facebook and then other. I don't know. It was explained to me, but it's shitty. Hinge is shitty. Tinder shitty. Bumble's the worst. I've only gotten one response on Bumble. This man had a picture of him and a black kid, and I said, did you borrow that kid, or is it yours? And then he was like, wow, he's brown, and he's my son. And I was like, hey, man, I'm just making a joke. Truly, oh. I don't know how to get better at online dating. So if a girl were to like, uh, send you a message first, what, what would you want to see? What would you want to read? I, I love when uh, when when the ladies message first, actually. You and, do? Yeah, definitely. And and a lot of times, I, I just appreciate when they like make a reference to something in my in my profile. Um, you know, I had like I wouldn't say I had like a long bio, but I listed basically like I had little icons for like books, uh, like movies, music, and. Uh, and would just list like three things in each category that I liked. And that was mm -hmm. basically, that was the bulk of my profile. So like if someone messaged me and said like, oh, I love Richard Linklater, I, that gives us something to talk about. So just anything that opens the door to a conversation mm -hmm. is a lot better than just like, hey, or hi, how are you? Or is that your dog? Like same like the, the black kid, you know, like, no, I didn't borrow <laughs> this fucking dog and put it on my bed. <laughs> Like sit next but to it. But you may have. I don't know. I guess I yeah. One one can't rule it out. People do a lot of fishy things on on the internet. So I guess that's possible. All right, EJ. Let's talk about how we know each other. So we met in 2007 at the Apple Store, and how I ended up at the Apple Store at like 1 a.m is because my iPod was broken and I needed to get it fixed. And I went to the Apple store and they were like, you have to make an appointment at the Genius Bar. And I said, okay. They're like, you could come back in like two hours. We're also having a dance party and you can come in and you don't have to wait online. And I was like, this is nuts. What do you mean you're having a dance party? And my friend was with me, Amanda, and she was like, we should, yeah, we should go to this dance party. And I was like, okay. And I believe Diplo was DJing, if yeah. I am not mistaken, which is nuts. That is correct. It was great. It was wonderful. How did you end up at the Apple Store dance party? Uh, so as mentioned earlier, uh, I worked at LimeWire at the time, and I was on like the you know the PR list for like, every band's and labels like publicist. Whenever a new song was out or a new album was dropping or there was some sort of performance, and so I had the opportunity to like email publicists, be like, hey, can I get on the list with a friend or or not with a friend, as the case may be. Uh, I couldn't convince anybody to come with me. They were like what are you talking about and so I just went by myself and uh it was wonderful it was like it was crazy town in there it was great it was nuts it was like a wild party and then yeah the like lights came up we had danced together and then I think I was like do you want to take my number I think and then we both had Motorola razors oh yeah mine was pink yours was black and then we exchanged numbers and then we were texting yeah. Well, can I just pause and say how I, I, I love how this story is like definitively 10 years old because you were getting your iPod fixed <laughs> and we both had Motorola <laughs> Razor phones. <laughs> yep. Yep. These are like relics of the past. Also, so my it was a shuffle and it wasn't broken. It was just on pause. So I was hitting play once and it was pausing it and all I had to do was hit it a second time. I mm. felt very dumb. Uh, but I mean, if I had figured that out, I wouldn't have met you. Sure. So we're texting. Also, I like found you on Facebook, but I was like, I can't friend him because then he'll know I was looking for him. And you had very little information on the internet about you. And it, it was very frustrating because I was like, I want to know about this boy that I just met. And it was so difficult to find information about you. Do you have more? Do you have a Facebook now? I do. Yeah, I have a Facebook. Um, I, I have my my full government name on Facebook because ah. I had uh, at one point in time, I was getting a lot of like requests from, um, you know, from like randos from like kindergarten and, <laughs> and childhood that mm -hmm. like, 
I'm, I'm a friendly guy, as you know. I mean, we were total strangers when we met and I was perfectly willing to engage, you know, engage in <laughs> dancing and conversation with you, a total stranger. Um, but like, I just don't want to deal with like people like, oh, you live in New York now? Well, what's that like? That's so cool. You know, having grown up in Arkansas, it's just like of that conversation, you just get tired of repeating the same rote bullshit. You're like, it's great. It's fine. I work. I love it here. My my stock response is actually, it depends on how you feel about paying $4 for a taco. (laughs) That's very funny. That's your baseline. $4 for a taco and everyone in Arkansas is like, hell no. Exactly. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Do you have an Instagram? I do. I have an Instagram and, uh, and that, that one is is a slight, I would say a slightly more popular feed because I get a lot of spam on that one. Ah. Um, so that's, that's nice. That makes me feel like someone out there is watching, even if it's like a Russian bot. <laughs> so I guess I'm not good at <laughs> looking up people on the internet because like I truly couldn't find anything about you. This was in 2007. So there yes. wasn't, you know, Instagram didn't exist. Twitter oh, didn't yeah. exist yet. But Facebook, oh, maybe I couldn't see all your pictures because we weren't friends. Maybe yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, there could have been privacy settings or my, my you know, very difficult to, uh, difficult to remember and spell name. No, Waborski, it's pretty phonetic. I think so too, but you would be amazed at how often people butcher it. Let's see, W-O-L-B-O-R-S-K-Y. Nailed it. It's phonetic, Waborski! <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, I don't know. I don't get it, man. People just see, like, anything that's not, like, Smith or Jones and just and like, shut down. I don't know. It's too hard. So then you invite me to your housewarming party in Brooklyn, and I distinctly remember going, how do I get there? And you said, use Hopstop. Yeah. And I was like, he's already teaching me new things. <laughs> and then, so then. Again, 2007, technology relics. <laughs> yep, Hopstop. nobody com. uses Hopstop anymore. So then I used Hopstop. It told me to get off. You don't live there anymore at Grand Army Plaza, and I could walk. Is, am I right? Is that the stop? Yeah. Yep. I have yep. a great memory for things that don't need to stay in my brain. So then I brought my roommate at the time, Shallon. We bought a bottle of, like, Nikola vodka, which is disgusting and cheap. Mm-hmm. And then I walk into your house, and the way you said my name, you went, Hey, Nicole! And I was like, oh, no, I think he's gay. <laughs> I think we got along because he's gay. And then I, in my dumb little brain, was like, I'm going to have the time of my life. I don't care that he's gay. I figured out how to get to Brooklyn. I know what hot stuff is. So then I drank that entire bottle of vodka. And then from my perspective, Shallon said that I almost rolled off your roof and I kept screaming at you that you were gay. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Yeah, there was there, there were maybe one or two other things that happened in the meantime, uh, but yeah, those are, those are kind of the highlights. Uh-huh. I mean, I mean, I, I wish the part that I wish you that you remembered and could describe for the audience is the experience of getting up to the roof through oh. the like death trap. Yes, so you had made of like a very thin ladder that like it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't like leaning on anything yeah it was just like a ladder from the ceiling to the floor and it was straight up it was like steel it yes. was like not even steel pipe it was just like just like steel bars it was like very scary and rickety yeah yeah it was it was definitely in the and the the hatch at the top of it that that led onto the roof wasn't like a door it like was a literal <laughs> like like a top of like a pot or a pan uh-huh Do you have to like <laughs> So, like, pick up and move to the side. It didn't, like, open, like, an escape hatch. Yeah, I don't think we were supposed to be on your roof. I mean, I'm not going to say it was strictly legal, but, like, we never got a citation, so it wasn't strictly illegal either. Fair. Uh, and then it was, a, it was a brownstone, so there was a lot of stairs, right? Yeah, exactly. So it was, it was up on the fifth floor of the brownstone, and, and our roof was one story above all of our neighbors' roofs. Um, so there was, like... You know, you, you weren't really, you didn't feel like you were in a row of houses. You were, like, just enough above them that you, you felt like you were in, like, your own, you know, on your own level. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that made the views wonderful, but also made the perspective fall all that, all that much <laughs> scarier. Um, and, yeah, at, at one point, um, as I remember, at one point, you, um, you very delicately um, stuck your whole face in my face. <laughs> Uh, and just like planted one on me Ooh. and I was like, Oh, all right. All right. I'm, we're making out now. Cool. Um, I didn't know my- I kissed you. 
absolutely. And all my friends, all my friends <gasps> were watching and like some of them were, were laughing because they weren't sure if that was like, okay, you know, if that was okay. Yeah. Um, <gasps> and other, and others were just, I think very shocked because I, I don't think anybody, you know, I don't think anybody saw that coming well, also, from, from my perspective. And nobody I don't think my knew who I was. I was a loud black woman who was very drunk. That's what I meant, but I didn't see it coming. I think, yeah, like, uh, yeah, as you said, you did drink a whole bottle of vodka. That's not an exaggeration. I was impressed, honestly. Oh, oh, oh. it was so much. Well, I'm really proud of myself that I kissed you. Yeah, oh, you were, you were bold. You were very bold. Oh, I mean, I'm so sad that I <laughs> don't remember that. And then the reason that you called me gay, actually, <laughs> at, that, at that moment, was that you said that I was a good kisser. And that I must be gay. Oh, which wow. Which seemed like incongruous to me. Because like, you would think that like a, 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 a good, good kisser would be into what they're kissing. If I were, you know, good at kissing you, it would be because I was not gay. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the, what the logic was there. But it definitely struck me as being an opportunity to not get deep, more deeply involved <laughs> in, 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 in that bit Fair. of romance out Fair. in public on my roof. So I was like, yeah, you got me. N nailed it. Super gay. <laughs> oh, no. And then you got very upset. Yeah, you were very upset with me. Yes. Yeah, as I remember, you, you, very, you, you were very frustrated and you sat down, leaned against uh, like a chimney on the roof, like, uh -huh. like a smokestack. And uh, after sitting down, Shallon, I think, came to check on you and you said you were okay. You just like needed to, needed to sit for a minute. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay. And then like the next thing we knew, I was, I, I was talking to my friend Ricky and we looked over and you were slumped over and just slowly <laughs> tipping. He ran over as you had like tipped all the way over and began to kind of like, not roll, but just kind of like slide down the slope <laughs> off the front of the house toward like a four-story drop-off into our front yard. Oh, no. Rick, God bless him, ran over and, uh, and gra grabbed you. And then, and then Mike, our other friend, and I uh, kind of ran over and we, we, we got you to, to wake up and not fall off the roof. You know what? Thank you. Which was great. I probably would have died if I had fallen off four stories of a roof. That's like, yeah, that's like how you die. Probably, especially given that you were like unconscious at the time. Actually, drunk people, they die harder. So maybe I would have stayed alive and just broken a bunch of bones. Yeah. You know, either way, I think that what my roommates were primarily concerned with after the fact was the liability issue. <laughs> like more so than, more so than like the, the, the mental or physical health of this complete stranger in our house. Uh -huh. Everybody like really got on my ass about like not having renter's insurance and like <laughs> wait, really? how we were serving alcohol to people. And we'd like definitely weren't supposed to be up on the roof. And Wait, that's so responsible of your friends. Yeah, practical motherfuckers, these guys. I couldn't believe it. My friends are all pieces of shit. They would have been like, let her die. <laughs> yeah, it was like, people were like, first of all, who was that? And how do you know her? <laughs> and secondly, I can't believe that you would let someone get that drunk and almost die at our house. Well, nobody let me do anything. I just drank that bottle. And I remember Shallon being like, don't do that. And then it was gone. So then after rolling off your roof, I think Shallon was like, okay, it's time to go. And I was like, okay, that's good, whatever. So then I get down these awful, this awful little ladder. Yeah, coming back down the death ladder was extra fun. <laughs> yeah, I remember it being so hard. And then I remember trying to go down your, like, actual stairs, and I don't know if I passed out and fell mm -hmm. or fell down your stairs and passed out. But I know at the end no, of the staircase, yeah. it was done. Uh, there was no waking me up. Yeah, we got, you, we got you about half a flight down before <laughs> you just gave up and stopped <laughs> using your legs. Uh, at which point, and again, again, this is an old brownstone. Uh -huh. so it's, it's, like a, it's kind of like a narrow staircase, like a wooden banister. Um, and so there wasn't like you know, there wasn't like a good way to really like, like if you could have put your arms around two of us, we could have walked, but like you could, there just wasn't room for three people to walk down uh -huh. a staircase like that. So it was really just like trying to figure out like, can we get like a blanket up here and like slide <laughs> oh, her down no. or protocol? <laughs> and yeah, so eventually um, my, my roommate Marcel, who I mentioned earlier, being on his, his now second luxury apartment in uh -huh. New York, um, he, he was like, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get a cup of water and a bunch of tortillas out of the fridge, and we're going to sober her ass up right here on the staircase. <laughs> Drink, like, a 
easily a half a gallon of vodka. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think these tortillas are going to cut it. Nope. So yeah, I think we just, we tried to like get you some, some, some food and water and that didn't really help. So eventually we just kind of like, all right, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta get her down. Yeah. I don't remember. Honestly, I don't remember how we did that. I vaguely remember a rolly chair. Yeah. There was a, there was an office chair being down put there. Being in a rolly sure. chair and being wheeled into a room with lots of blankets. Yes. Yeah. That is, that was our living room. Uh-huh. And there was uh yeah, there was, there was like, it was a big open living room with a closet, like a coat closet there. And then we also had a half bathroom, but it was like the wrong half. It wasn't the toilet half. It was just a shower and a sink in like what used to be a closet. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I remember we did, we, re- we, we wheeled you down there and we had some blankets and a cup of water. Do yeah. you want to, do you want to tell the rest of the story? Yeah, do you want to so tell what then happened? I was like, Ooh, this bathroom is so close to where I am. And then I peed, but I'm pretty sure I peed just on your floor. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I will say this. I can't verify what kind of liquids ended up on the floor. <laughs> I just know. No, I definitely like peed on your floor. Well, I, I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt with, with my roommates, at least, because, again, there were a lot of questions around, like, <laughs> who were you? Who, and, where did she come from? How did this person get yeah. in our house? I was, like, a little scraggly, like, troll who was like, ha, I'm very drunk and I'm going to be destructive. And then when I woke up, one of my contacts had fallen out. And at the time, I don't know if you remembered, I wore blue, blue contacts. Yeah, blue eyes. Mm-hmm. That was very... Very gorgeous and arresting blue eyes, I might have Oh, thank you. Well, one of those beautiful blue eyes had popped right out of my head. So one eye was brown, one eye was blue. I had fake hair in my head that was, like, sliding out. And I truly looked like a, like a mess. Like, I looked very scary. Um, and then you were nowhere to be found in the morning. Uh, I think Marcel maybe was just like, uh, the door's that way. And I was like, oh, thank you. And he was like, get home safe. And I was like, I will. <laughs> and then no cab would stop for me <laughs> because I think I just like looked insane. So I just like closed one eye and like patted my hair down. I was like, eh, please stop for me. And then my ankle was really swollen because I had like (laughs) fallen down your stairs. So it took me like an hour to get up my six flights of stairs. And then I like stayed in my apartment for like two weeks because I was like, I can't walk. This is not good. Then I had to go have x-rays. It was real wild. Damn. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. The the, the extensive ankle damage I didn't know about. I was more worried about a concussion (laughs) after getting down the stairs. Uh, I honestly probably did have a concussion. I've had so many concussions that I've, just never treated. Yeah, you're like an NFL player in that <laughs> oh, way. Oh, no! I'm going to get CTE and start killing people. That would be terrible. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I guess I remember a lot for being as drunk as I was. So it's what really was incredible. the aftermath of this? Did, like, your friends were like, who was she? What happened? Uh, why did this happen? And what was your answer? Yeah, well, I told people the honest truth, which was uh, I met you at a dance party at the Apple Store. You seemed like a lot of fun. I felt validated. Honestly, I felt validated by how much fun you had at our party. <laughs> Life of the party over here. Man. The only story anyone remembers from that night is about you. So, and I still hear about it to this day. There are kids. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be honest with you. So. One of my friends um, found the YouTube video that you did where you, where you told this story, a Jewish boy incident. Yes. And, uh, and they found it and they sent it to uh, an email list of um, a fraternity that, that my friends and I had started when we were in college. Mm-hmm. That is now, you know, I guess like 12 or 13 years old and is, it's co-ed. A very diverse group of, of kids, um, male, female, all, you know, all ethnicities, all, you know, the grad students, freshmen, everybody. And they all know about it now, most of whom I don't know and will never meet, who know me by this, by you, by this story. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, it's, it's a, at, at this point, it's part of my, my personal legacy and personal brand, I guess. What a goddamn treat. Well, I'm so happy to have done that for you. Okay, so I always ask my podcast... Uh, why won't you date me? So after that party, why wouldn't you date me? 
Because then I saw you in Time Out New York, and I was like, you know what? I'll give him a second chance, because he didn't respond to my last text. So he's in the Time Out New York singles edition. Mm, God has just given me a real gift. So then I emailed you, and I was like, hey, EJ, don't know if you remember me, but uh, sorry about the party. And you went, uh, never forgot, wait, no, long ago forgiven, never forgotten, be well. And I was like, oh, that was really, he shut me down. So why wouldn't you date me? Well, I, I think that at a certain point, um, my, my roommate spooked me with the liability concerns. You know, I was just like a little bit worried. I was a little bit worried that like you might be one of these comedians with a death wish. Mm-hmm. That is, uh, that profound sadness is a thread that runs through all, all great genius comics. Well, you didn't know I was a comedian then because I wasn't. I did know that you were hilarious and that you like lived very large and out loud with your personality. <laughs> absolutely no shits about anything ever and I felt like you know at the time the 21 year old me was was scared you know Mm -hmm. I was new to New York I was new in my job I didn't think that I could handle um handle like a real relationship you know the 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 women that I dated in those early years in New York were like mostly people who were either friends of friends who were like very thoroughly vetted and and or were like people that I just felt very comfortable like hanging out with Mm -hmm. And didn't feel like, you know, I had to, like, perform for, like, be anything other than just, like, my lazy, selfish 21-year-old self. And we could just all, like, go get beers with our friends and do whatever. I felt like you, I was going to have to be on my game Mm. with you. You were a fabulous dancer. You were, as I said, you were hilarious. You entertained everyone around you. You were the center of, of gravity of that party um, with, with the conversation, even up to and including the point where you loudly accused me of being gay in front of all of my, <laughs> all of my friends and loved ones. Um, Sorry about that. Hey, it's cool. You're not, you're not the first or the last person to assume that I was gay, so it's okay. I'm used to it. Well, I don't know why I would kiss you and then be like, you're gay. That makes, well, I don't know. A lot of things I do truly don't make sense. Mechanism. If someone doesn't want to immediately insert themselves in you, you know, there's only one conclusion to draw from that, I think. If someone doesn't want to have sex with you in the middle of a party on a rooftop in front of all their friends. Fair. Because I probably would have fucked you on that rooftop in front of all your friends. <laughs> Just because I like being wild. That would have given a whole other dimension to that story. Oh, it would have been nuts. Oh, here's a... Okay, so if we were in an alternate dimension and I acted like a normal person, do you think you would have gone out with me again? Hell yeah. I would have taken you up with the best plate of fucking bolognese you've ever had in your life. Uh, so the, it's true. You're the Jew that got away. It wasn't meant to be. Well, it's okay. This was fun, EJ. I, we have to wrap it up, but this was great. Thank you so much for doing this uh, and talking about it. Thanks for having me. Let's see. You're not a comedian, so you don't have anything to plug. Nothing at all. Um... Uh, is there something, is there a, uh, is there a soda that you like? No, can I, can I, can I make a, can I make a quick plug for, yes. um, for hurricane relief? Actually, I think it's, it's really important. Oh, that's uh, great. South Texas still recovering. South Florida still recovering. Puerto Rico's in big trouble. Living in, in Brooklyn uh, here, you know, I see a lot of, of rallying, especially around the island, around Puerto Rico. Um, in my part of Brooklyn, there's a lot of Puerto Ricans, and, and there's still a lot of people really hurting. So if anybody out there is listening and has an extra dollar or five to give to Hurricane Relief, get out there and give it. That was so nice. All of my friends are pieces of shit, and they're like, come see this show that I'm doing. It's $5, and maybe I'll be funny. But that's like helping a bunch of people, and that's so nice. I shouldn't have gotten so drunk. You're a real catch. Uh, (laughs) Also, you're still just as attractive as I remember, which is a goddamn dream. Uh, Your girlfriend's lucky, and I hope she sucks your dick well. Bye, EJ. That was a HeadGum Podcast.